First, I will actually be covering the three ways to fund your ATM business. After that, Mike himself will be presenting how you, yes, you watch it, come close, you watch it. Don't look if you're driving, but how you're gonna save yourself from a real estate crash with ATMs, okay? And then of course, Paul has a phenomenal presentation at the end of the safest way for you to actually grow your ATM business in 2022. Welcome, welcome to this week's Weekly Live. Paul, can you hear me? I can hear you, buddy. How are you guys doing today? Great. I'm oh, great, man. We actually have a special guest today. I think he's here. Where is he at? Mike, you hear us? What's up? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. How's everybody doing tonight? Pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Happy it's to a, be here. It's awesome. It, it's it's sunny amazing. in the West Coast right now. How, how, how dark is it over there? Still sunny. Yeah, sun, sun's setting pretty much, but sunny okay. and nice. Yeah, for now, okay. until the cold comes. Not looking forward to that. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Let's let's, let's wait like uh, let's wait like two minutes. Let people join. Um, there was a lot of people joining today because I know we do have a special live presentation today. I was getting DMs like crazy. They're like, I can't wait for tonight. <laughs> right? So yeah, even some of our current clients were like, I'm going to be on there tonight to see you live. It's going to be great. So mm -hmm, we're going to have mm -hmm. a lot of our current clients on here too, which is going to be awesome. For sure, for sure. Mike, when was the last time that you jumped on a live, brother? I was just thinking of that before we started. It's got to be two months, three months. I, I don't, I don't know. I know it's been quite. It's been a minute for sure. So I'm like, sure, hey sure. guys, I got to get on this live with you guys. But sure, you know, sure. on the back end, being the processor, I'm, I'm so busy, and yeah, all the current clients know that. Yeah, I work in the background, which I'll get into. But um, I'm happy to be here. I got to get on more lives with you guys. I got a lot of good information for and sure. knowledge for everyone. You know absolutely absolutely and for anyone yeah. watching right now man you guys are in for a treat mike uh i think someone asked earlier is anyone from colorado and i was just like oh yeah perfect just watch the live today because you know you have like one of the main guys from colorado right here live, speaking so. of, let's, <laughs> connect. let's connect speaking of, of which, guys. speaking of which right for everybody watching right because you know where mike's from now why don't you comment below? Help us out with the algorithms. We want to know where you're watching us from. So comment below your city and state. I am actually in Mexico right now, right? So I don't even remember what the city's called, but I'm in Mexico. Mike, you said you're in Colorado. Paul. Colorado. Okay. Southern Colorado. Yeah, San Diego, guys. Originally from San Francisco. So all my Barry people, stand up. <laughs> <laughs> sounds sounds like a rap song right there. I like that. <laughs> I think hey. we play the 49ers this year. The Broncos play the 49ers this year, I think. Oh, that's it. Hey, I think. hey, we should we should actually go to the game, man. No, for we sure. We yeah. definitely should. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm a big Niners fan, for sure. <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, no. So so I, I know we have a lot of clients from different backgrounds. Um, so we actually want to know what you do for a living, right? Yeah. Us full time. We help people start their ATM businesses, hands down, right? I think largest a day over 100 clients. But comment below your job or your business. Yeah, you know, we, know your, we know your future ATM business owners, but let us know what you do for a living right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, let's let's start off with us, guys. So yeah. down in the comments below, guys, just type what you guys do for your nine to five or what you guys do for your niche or your business. Um, me, myself, I three three careers, guys. Um, Full-time sales manager from a chemical company. Uh, then went to law enforcement, became a detective for seven years, and then transitioned to full-time entrepreneur. And it, my vehicle was ATMs. Amazing enough. So get them. Sure, sure. Yeah. No, same, same, similar. Uh, military, shout out Marine Corps out there. A lot of actually people come from the Marines. I don't know if the algorithms are working. And I just saw Matthew comment, former law enforcement. Thank you for your service also. Um, I also happened to get into the, the blue collar trade of law enforcement for a little bit. was a supervisor at a major agency, got into entrepreneurship and I mean, here we are now helping you out. How about you, Mike? That's awesome. Yeah. Born and raised Southern California originally. Oh, yeah. Moved to Colorado, nice. or actually Utah first and then Colorado. But, uh, you know, I did real estate uh, for a number of years, a lot of years, did mortgages, uh, you know, and then I got into insurance for a while, did both, you know, and then we moved to Colorado, got into the ATM business. But I did hotels for a little bit in between while I was in Utah. Enjoyed that, loved it. But, you know, nine to five. Uh, broke off, did got in, 
to ATMs and man, I can't even believe where it's gotten me. So I'm excited to share that with you guys. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, we're going to be uh, in for a treat for that. I'm actually excited. So, so for anybody, if you're brand new, right, this is your first time watching a live, we're actually excited to get you like, I mean, this is the best one to start off with the mic, the man himself, right? Comment new below, comment new, help us with the algorithms. At the end of the day, we have a lot of people that are joining us. They're still getting off of work. And they're driving home from work and they're joining us comment new so we know who you are that we know to reach out to you give you some free resources okay and on top of that right if you have not read our guide yet right and you're interested in actually starting your atm business soon then comment send it that was actually a saying we used to say in the military all my marine corps guys you know what send it means right uh, totally something different here but comment send it below we will send you our brand new Beginner's Guide, it covers all the basics to turn your ATM business. One of our teammates will send it. Now, real quick guys, agenda-wise. So we gotta cut this quick because at the end of the day, I know they wanna get to what Mike has to say because what you've been profiting in the ATM business, hands down, right? The GOAT when it comes to ATMs, okay? So what, what we're gonna be covering today, okay? Pay attention guys. First, I will actually be covering the three ways to fund your ATM business because at the end of the day, if you don't got to use your own money, that's the best way to start your business. And I'm going to cover some tips and tricks you guys will like. After that, Mike himself will be presenting how you, yes, you watching, coming close, you watching, don't look if you're driving, but how you're going to save exactly. yourself from a real estate crash with ATMs, okay? And then, of course, Paul has a phenomenal presentation at the end of the safest way for you to actually grow your ATM business in 2022, all right? We're guys are in for a treat. Sure, for sure. All right, so yeah, a uh, little bit of background about me. I'd just like to talk about my background. You know, I come, oh, Cal Southern California. Sorry for everyone that's out there. They're feeling it. Yeah, it's like, uh, you say that like it's a bad thing, man. Well, <laughs> when you move out of Cali, you realize how bad it really is and how expensive everything truly is. Even though in the real estate market all across the country right now, everything is just through the roof, right? Um, you know, but I come from a mortgage background. I used to do project development loans, just regular uh, residential single family uh, loans. And I did that for a lot of years. Um, you know, and it just, unfortunately for me, I got pretty much taken advantage and, and excuse my language, but screwed over by everybody, many brokers. So I spent uh, a lot of, well, I spent a lot of time saving because I knew I had to go get my broker license. The only way I was going to succeed in my mind was go on my own, get my broker license and, um, you know, open my own office with employees and yada, yada, yada. Well, long story short, um, after being taken advantage and screwed over by everybody, finally opened my doors. I dropped my life savings, 90 plus thousand dollars. The day before the market crash, I dumped about 25, 30 thousand dollars in leads for my guys, my floor. And then the next day the market crashed. So uh, I ended up homeless, you know, I, I lost everything. I, I just kind of went about it wrong. I, I didn't have a mentor mentoring me. And I just kind of went about it the wrong way. I failed, right? I, I truly failed. And I was homeless for, I was, it was a short amount of time. I had, you know, my network still that helped me get me back on my feet. Thanks to anyone that's out there. It's my boys that are listening, but um, you know, it's uh, your network is your net worth, right? So um, they helped me get on my feet. I got into to insurance and I got a broker license in 14 States and wow. I worked for ADP for a while. Uh, doing workers' compensation, but nice, again, nice. earning a salary that wasn't that high in California, I realized this is just not paying the bills. I got to do something. There's just something out there for me, you know. Uh, I ended up moving. I, I sold everything that I owned in California and moved out of state to Utah. I knew, knew, but I knew nobody. I knew I needed a fresh start, and so you know that's where I met what met my wife and kids. Ended up in um, in the hotel business for a little bit. I loved it, but it still wasn't making ends meet right so we ended up starting over i took the family started over again in colorado which most of my family had moved there and uh and i got a job uh actually just it was my first job it was out here and it was when dispensaries were just medical and so let's do this for a little bit i mean why not so the guy that used to come in my mentor used to come in to fill the atm and it, it, it intrigued me you know it intrigued me and uh here so eventually, yeah, I hit him up and 
I always thought it was banks that controlled the ATMs and, you know, I knew nothing. Back then, 11 years ago, there was no YouTube for ATMs. Nobody knew about it. It was a real secret business. And uh, he got me into it. Basically, I serviced all his ATMs and, you know, uh, almost 11 years later, I mean, I started with one good location, saving my money, letting the capital build, reinvest, um, and I'm at 109 machines. And I would wow. never thought in my life that this would be my career. And now wow. that I truly know this business inside and out, I mean, it is hands down the best business in the entire world, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's absolutely, there's nothing like letting my... I mean, right now, all my ATMs are making me money and I don't have to be there. I'm on this live right now and I'm making money sitting here. That's, That's true. Phenomenal, phenomenal, yeah. phenomenal. So, so, so at the end of the day, like that is your, I mean, I would want to go into quick, quick overview of what I do. But that is like nothing tops what you just said. Cause at the end of the day, you're here right now while you're getting paid. Like literally <laughs> most people are checking their phones, doing other things and you're checking and it's just ching, ching, ching at the end of the day, right? Yeah, so, until they close and they open the awesome. next day. It's just, it's awesome. all over. Again. Awesome, yeah, you know, yeah. It's amazing. So, so when, it, when it comes down to it, right? So a little bit about myself, get them, you know, COO. That's, I mean, the fancy term for that is chief operating officer. I like to call it the glue that helps things run, but of ATM together. So when you guys work with us, when you guys get your ATM business started, I make sure things are running smooth. Before that, like I said, Spent a little bit in the United States Marine Corps. Raw shout out to all my veterans. There used to be insane in the Marines, right? There was the military. It's all equal, but some parts of the military are more equal. <laughs> you guys know what I'm saying. But when it comes down to it, if you're a veteran, comment below. Veteran, want to thank you for your service. I really appreciate the fact that we had brothers and sisters in arms. With that being said, got out of the Marine Corps, decided, didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. So thoughts. Hey, college probably isn't the right thing for me right now. Had some dead end jobs, actually got into law enforcement, right? I don't know how grace of God or something got into it ended up promoting very young to decent in the industry, got paid pretty well, but figured that just wasn't enough. Started some businesses, right? Invested in real estate also. Michael will actually get into that in the future, but investing in some real estate properties, got into some businesses, invested in crypto in 2016. Shout out to all my crypto fans and ended up not needing the job anymore. I'd like to bring my expertise to you guys to help you guys start your business, okay? With that being said, I wanna get into the first lesson, all right? So we are gonna comment on how you can start your ATM business. There's three ways, three main ways. If you're excited to figure out the best three ways to fund your ATM business, Comment fund below, F-U-N-D. When it comes down to it, this is the fastest way to start your ATM business is with somebody else's money. So I wanna give you these secrets, all right? I see a few comments. I see some veterans in here also. Again, like I said, thank you for your service. Now, with that being said, three ways to start your ATM business. First of all, saving up and with investors, okay? Why do I say that? How many of you guys have a college fund? a piggy bank. You know what I'm talking about? You got that extra dollar bill. You forgot it in the washer. You bring it out. It's still dry miraculously. You're like, man, the tide went through it. The dryer went through it, but it's still there. So you throw it in that piggy bank, right? After a while, the fun starts to get bigger, 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 right? Well, at the end of the day, that's one of the easiest ways to fund your business is with your own funds, your savings. At the end of the day, think about it. That's how most ATM business owners and how most entrepreneurs in general start their business. Okay. Yeah, that's how well, I started. That's how exactly. I started. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so with that, your own savings, that's an option. If maybe you decide, well, I just don't have enough right now. Not enough to start my business. That's totally fine because that's when you bring in investors. Think about it. Most of the Fortune 500 company, not most actually, all these Fortune 500 companies got to where they're at with investors. So it's okay if you can't completely fund your business yourself. That's fine. How many of you guys have brothers? How many of you guys have sisters? I know I do. I grew up with multiple older sisters. They tormented me. I still love them. I'm just kidding. But still, when it comes down to it, you can have co-investors. You might have a close friend. You might have a coworker that's coincidentally, you guys work together. You guys have the same idea and you say, hey, why don't we just partner up? Because at the end of the day, they used to say in the Marine Corps, two is one, one is none, right? So if there's two of you, you can cover twice the distance, twice the funds. So that's an option too. 
Second, credit cards. I know, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, get them. Well, what do you mean credit cards? Like, like the credit card in your wallet? Yeah, yeah, that one. How many of you guys have gotten a credit card offer in the mail? I know I have. I got hundreds of them, right? I used to use them when I had a barbecue in the backyard. I used to actually use them as Tinder to start the barbecue, okay? Well, here's the thing with that. Don't do that, guys. The plastic's probably not that best, right? <laughs> I'm no good at barbecue. That's probably not good. But here's the thing with that. Take advantage. Use someone else's money. That's how most people take advantage of things. One, some of the largest companies, if the CEO is not investing all their money, no, nah, they're using your money. They're using investors' money, angel investors. Where does that come from? So what's the thing you can do at our level right now? Credit cards. So typically, you're going to get an offer in the mail. They're going to say something like 0% interest or 0% APR for 12 months, 15 months, 18 months. Quick story. I remember one of our clients, we're on a call. He hey, I'm ready to roll. Cool. He's like, wait, wait a second. I have a credit card. I was like, what do you mean? It's like, I, I had a credit card in the mail. I know it's somewhere. And he starts looking around frantically, right? I'm like, are you okay? He's like, yeah, no, I, I'm just trying to remember where it's at. You know that feeling when you, like, you lose your keys? Or nowadays, you know, when you lose your phone, right? You leave it on the seat somewhere and you just have a panic attack, right? Well, basically as a panic attack. He's like, I, I need to find this card. I'm like, what, what's so good about this card? He's like, dude, you don't understand. 24 months of no interest. I almost fell back in my chair like this. Whoa, you gotta be kidding me. 24 months on a card. He's like, yeah, dude, I got this offer extended to me. I forgot about it. They just sent it to me a month ago. They said no interest for two years. So think about that for a second. You get to use another company's money to start your business with literally no interest for two years. I mean, that's a no-brainer. That's, that's a no-brainer to me. You, I mean, you can't even get anything like that anymore, right? No. So one of these options is the American Express Blue Business Cash Card. We always bring it up. I personally have it. Don't have my wallet. Speaking of losing your wallet, right? Don't have a wallet on me, but we're not associated with them whatsoever. However, the reason we bring them up is because they offer no interest for a year, typically, right? It's a business credit card, right? So you can use that to fund the cost of starting your business and use your cash that you have on hand to fill the ATM, right? It's a little trick we used to do to actually expand our business. So now you have no interest for a year. You're building what? Business credit. That's one thing what people even pay to find out about. You're building a reputation with the bank. They're going to extend your credit limit every single few months and you have no interest. And guess what? You use the profits from your ATM business, a few hundred dollars you make in a month to pay off the card and you repeat, get a new card. And then all of a sudden your credit limit's at like $500,000. So man, I started with just one. I remember this guy named Get him. He's telling me about it. All right. Now, there's credit cards, there's your own savings. And of course, there's third party funding, all right? Why do I bring this up? Well, maybe your credit limit's not that great, right? Maybe your credit score is not that great. Not a big problem, right? Because at the end of the day, we can connect you with credit repair experts if you like, okay? So you might want to take advantage of third-party funding. And what I mean by that is using a bank's money against them, okay? So a few options with this. You can connect with another bank, right? Or use your own bank because you have a relationship. I'm, I'm always a fan. Mike brought this up on this masterclass we had earlier in the year, always maintain a relationship with your bank. I know you guys have bank accounts. I know you guys have bank accounts. Reach out to the banker. Ask them, hey, what type of funding options do I have? Use that to your advantage. At the end of the way, at the end of the day, your net worth is your net worth. Well, that bankers are part of your net worth or they know somebody that can fund you. That's an option. Another thing you can do is your 401k. Think about that for a second. Savings. Okay, so I had a 401k. I actually ended up cashing that out, reinvested it into my own business. So I don't know about you guys, stock market's not looking too good right now. And I laugh, but it's more of an awkward laugh. I'm like, man, I'm, like, oh, no, you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta drink a little extra coffee when you start talking about that. Well, with that being said, an option you can do is sometimes is cash out your 401k for your business or look this up, write this down, guys. It's called the rollover for business startup. R-O-B-S, okay? Somebody on the team, type that in. Roll over for business startup. So you can actually roll over the savings from your stock market or your actual 401k into your business. Of course, this is not financial advice. Look into it, look if it's right for you, but we're all about giving you the most options. But if that doesn't work, one of those four options I just mentioned, there's a fifth. We actually partnered with a third-party funding company. 
Paul. They're actually based out of California, Southern California, just like Mike, right? What they do is connect you with multiple lenders to get you started. If that sounds like something you're interested in, pay attention, okay? The only two requirements are a 620 credit score, okay? 620 and 40,000 year in income with either a W-2 or if you're self-employed, some tax returns. If that sounds like something you want more information on, that's it, just a little more info. Maybe you want someone from our team to reach out. Comment, believe below. That's right, comment, believe, because at the end of the day, you have to believe it can be done. If you don't believe that no one else will, right? So if you want some more info, or if you're just ready to keep going, like get them, all right, we're done with funding, let's get some like. <laughs> comment, believe below. One of our teammates will reach out. I'll even send you a message. See what options we have for you, because at the end of the day, we want to see you get started, okay? Mike, on to you. Yeah, you know, and just that those were all great, great points. That's just fantastic ways to get started. Mm -hmm. Most of you have cash. Some of you don't. Some of you own homes and real estate. Right now, the market's really high. I would say a good portion of you have equity in your home. If you guys purchased quite a few years back or even a few years back, you've got equity. That's how I grew my business. I ran into it. And this is maybe either just starting out or when you get to a point where you're kind of hit your max. I did a refinance, pulled cash out. That was the best thing that ever happened to me because with that cash, I took some of it, invested into my own home, remodeled some stuff. I threw the rest in the business and it just skyrocketed. It gave me the capital to purchase more ATMs and put my cash into these ATMs. Because for those of you that don't, you don't, that don't know, you purchase the ATM and you put your own cash inside of the machines and it just cycles. So it hits your day, every day you get paid. It's wonderful. But if I hadn't done that, I mean, I probably would have, oh, I would have been at my max. I wouldn't have known what to do. But there is equipment financing out there too for when you guys do scale and get bigger. Just keep that in mind. So awesome. awesome. If you guys are excited to hear about, uh, you know, how ATMs can save you from a real estate crash or pretty much any crash, comment, uh, let's go below. Let's hear it. Let's go. Um, I've got some exciting stuff for you guys. A lot of it's ATM related to any other investments, um, including real estate. So let's type, let's go, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so I'm, so for those of you new watching that don't know me, I am the um, ATM Together processor. And so uh, I've been in the business about 11 years, 109 machines. We process nationwide uh, for many, many clients and we do all 50 States. And so, um, you know, the main thing I wanted to talk about today is, and of course, this is not financial advice. And these are based on my opinions of my 15 to 16 years doing real estate in my past is I truly believe we're headed for a, not only a market real estate crash correction, but an everything bubble crash, um, including the debt market. So, uh, for what that mean, what that means, guys, is we've been on a 14-year, pretty much straight tra up tra trajectory in the real estate market. Real estate cycles. For those of you out there that are in real estate, you guys know well that every eight to 12 years we'll see a correction in the real estate market. We're on 14 year 14 right now since 2008, and uh, it's not really looking good because it's gone up straight up. Uh, especially the last like four or five years, the most it's ever gone in history. Um, prices are just unaffordable uh, right now all across the country. And also interest rates are rising. And so when interest rates, rates rise, that same home that they used to be able to afford at 300,000, that's now worth five, 600,000, they can't afford it or get approved. So um, interest rates are rising. Uh, it's going to bring a, a pretty big correction in my opinion. Um, so I really think uh, <laughs> just in general, if you look at what it takes to invest into real estate, okay, because I'm a big real estate guy and I'm not knocking real estate in any way, you guys. I love real estate. I'm waiting. I'm just waiting to purchase, waiting for it to crash because if I buy now, I'm buying high and when the crash comes, it's just basically you're going to be buying way too high and you're going to be waiting till the market goes back up, which I don't have my crystal ball. I can't tell you how long that'll be. But what I do know, okay, is the cost of an ATM is anywhere between 23 and $2,800, depending on what model you get, okay? 
And what I do know is that real estate right now, if you were to go buy a rental, and in most cases, you know, you're buying a two, three hundred thousand dollar home, um, you know, that's livable, and you don't have to put a lot of money into it. Uh, you're putting twenty percent down. You know, that's 20, 30, 40 grand, depending on the price of the home. The entry point for real estates is very low, okay? The entry point for, uh, you know, the cash down for a house is really high. Now, most of my friends who have a lot of uh, real estate have already sold their properties. They're in cash waiting for the crash. But, you know, the average return after all of your expenses, net income, you're, you're going to get three to $500 uh, from your rental, if that, right? So you could take that same 2300 bucks for an ATM and you can uh, put it in a decent location and you'll net anywhere between three and 500 or anywhere up to a thousand or even $2,000 a month just with that investment. Okay, which is phenomenal. I mean, you're not going to get returns like that anywhere on the planet, um, which is, I mean, it's just unheard of. Um, now, mind you, you will get times when you don't get a great location, but uh, what I like to call ATMs is a floating asset. Okay, it's an asset that you own. And so you place it into a location. If it doesn't happen to do well, you just put it into another location that does well. So uh, a floating asset is what I call an ATM. And you guys, are like really, truly, um, your ROI could be anywhere between, I mean, some is like four months. I've had ATMs paid off in a few weeks, get a good location, up to a year and a half, depending on the location and your splits uh, with the merchants. So for me, it's a no-brainer. Uh, you, you have your assets pay for your liabilities. I do see owning your own home for those of you that want to buy a home. Now, I think now is not a good time. Take that with a grain of salt, it's my opinion. But you can build your ATM business and get your monthly income to pay for that payment, okay? So I always teach assets pay for liabilities, okay? So your, your assets, monthly income can pay for uh, covering the cost of your ex monthly expenses. Once you do that, you're pretty much financially free. And this the ATM business is the best way to do that, okay? Um, you know, and again, you're going with cost of repairs on a home versus cost of repairs on an ATM, which ATMs rarely go down. I'm not going to say that they're perfect, but there are workhorses, uh, you know, like if you need a card reader, it's 200 bucks. You need a new roof, that's ten to $14,000 or more. So uh, that's kind of a big one, right? The repairs are going to be a lot less in cost. Um, you know, and then you got to deal with tenants too, of course, in real estate. You know, you get a tenant that destroys your home, you're paying several thousand dollars to fix it up. You don't have to do that with your employees, I call them, with, with ATMs. You place it, you maintain it, and do the maintenance on it, and uh, your employees don't argue back with, at, at you. They don't argue with you. <laughs> That's the best part. Um, and, you know, they just maintain them. They, get, they go and go and go and go and keep, continue to make you passive income while you're doing your nine to five, which is great. Real estate is kind of passive too, but you do run into more issues with real estate, potentially a lot more issues and a lot more costly than you do with the ATM business. Um, you know, your ROI is much faster. I like to, I, for those clients of mine that are that are listening, our clients and students, uh, I talk about the pooled return effect, which is fantastic, you guys. You're gonna love to hear this. So when you get one ATM, all right, now you're waiting for that ATM to be paid off, that ROI. Now let's say you, you're scaling and getting more ATMs. Now you got 15 of them, let's say in a year or even a year and a half. Now you've got 15 ATMs working to pay them that, that first one, that second one, that third one off. By, by the time uh, you got 15, the 15th is paying for the 16th that much quicker. Um, and honestly, by 15, you're gonna have your next ATM paid for like a month ago. So it's called a pooled, pooled investment, pooled return. You don't get that with real estate. And again, going back with ATMs, uh, they're mobile. So you own that asset, you can place them in different locations. You can't do that with a house. What if you got a, you buy a house and it turns out to be in a downturning market? You're stuck. You can't pick that house up and move it somewhere else. So uh, just a lot of benefits, you guys. Uh, so, so far, if you're liking what you're hearing, uh, just comment below, uh, loving it loving it. <laughs> uh, I got some more for you guys. I just want to hear your feedback. And uh, so the next thing, 
this is kind of important too, is spreading your eggs out. Okay, you all, you all have heard that term before. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, okay? When you buy a home, you're kind of stuck in that area. ATMs, you got them spread out over multiple locations. Again, you could just move one ATM to a new location uh, and you play what I call musical ATMs till you find that good home for that one. Most of the, most of the locations do pretty well. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the other thing is, which is good, I don't give financial advice or tax advice. And I'm pretty sure uh, that this is still in effect. You have to depreciate a home, okay? ATMs is equipment. Under the previous administration, they made a tax law to where everything, uh, all equipment, $2,500 or less can be completely written off on your taxes, which is massive, you guys. It's huge. At the end of the year, we buy like 30 ATMs, individual ATMs, and we can write it all off on our taxes. I don't know if that's going to change this year, but uh, for now, it's very, very good. So, um, you know, get them and Paul in my finishing a statement. I ho uh, hope you guys enjoyed what I've had to say today. Uh, the ATM business truly is the best business in the world. It's changed my life forever. I'm blessed. I will never do anything else. I mean, I'm, I'm going to eventually go to real estate once it crashes, but I won't do anything else. I just love this business. And I know you guys will too. So wow. I'm hoping, hoping to see you guys. Hoping to see you guys. I'll be mentoring each and every one of you. And I will teach you, all of you, to get to wow. my to where I'm at today. So, for sure. So I have a quick question for you, Mike. Right? Sure. I'm actually going to share my screen because of course you forgot to mention one point. And since we have you here, I know the audience will not get their due diligence or get their justice served unless they ask this question. So give me Bring a second, it. let me share my screen. <laughs> I'm not the best at math, I told you. Like in the Marine Corps, we oh, use these crayons. We're like, hey, one claymore, one grenade equals two. Okay, cool, right? So we used, <laughs> yeah. that's how we used to figure I'm, things out, all right? <laughs> I'm not good at math either. And that's why yeah. when you get in the ATM business, you have a back office system that does all the math for you. You don't even have to think about it. Yeah, see, <laughs> that's see, we're part. simple. I like to eat glue. I like to eat glue once in a while, you know, it's just one of those glue. things, man. Don't knock me. Hey, that's just the Marine Corps thing, right? Oh so God. let me see. Can you guys see my screen? All right. Yeah. So I just want to do some basic math based on what you're saying. All right. So ATMs versus real estate. So we'll say we bought one house, right? For a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. That's, I mean, realistically, anybody that's involved in real estate right now knows this, this is not realistic. You're not going to buy a house for a hundred thousand dollars. Right. I mean, my, that was my, then that was below my down payment for a house in the Bay area, California. So hundred thousand dollar house, right. We'll say you put 20% down because typically I mean, you're, you're in the mortgage industry. It's about, I think, 20% for a down payment. Yep. Yeah. So 25, well, that's $20,000, right? See, I told you my bad, it's not that great. All right. So that's a $20,000 investment. And then you said that that person will probably get, after all expenses, maybe 300 to 500 a month, right? Right. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Now, Somewhere in the negative or break even. Okay. So ATMs, right? We will say for an ATM, let's say average investment, well, we'll say three to 5,000. Right, maybe if that okay, so three to five thousand, three to five thousand dollars for an investment, right? Which is, I mean, realistically, that is about a quarter of the investment. So, we'll just say we'll just say five thousand dollars, five thousand dollar investment for the ATM, right? You gotta get the ATM cash inside, things like that, okay? And you're still looking at what three to five hundred a month. So, what you're saying is with one ATM. No, actually with one real estate investment, and that's like a not realistic number, you could have four ATMs up and running and four times, let's see, four times 300, you're gonna be making $1,200 a month with the same cost involved when investing in ATMs. Right, minus not having to pay for an air conditioning or carpet or paint or dealing with tenants. I mean, wow. it's, it's a no brainer, so, absolutely. And then on top, so I can do the basic math like that, right? Now, if you don't mind me asking, Mike, you said how many ATMs do you have open running right now? I honestly think it's 110, 111 now, but I, <laughs> let's be <laughs> saving You can't even count. I just like, so, yeah, I have to recount them because I've sent quite a few out in the last few weeks. Just, you're like the Grant just, Cardone of uh, ATMs when it comes out. You can't even keep, you can't even keep track, okay? So, <laughs> so based on that, you ever, you ever played prices, right? 
Paul no. can play The Price is White. <laughs> How many of you guys have played The Price is Right? You know what I'm talking about. I used, yeah. My grandma and me used to watch that all the time, Love right? <laughs> so I'm going to give a range of maybe what you're making about from your ATMs, right? Just tell us if we're getting closer, right? Mm. Paul, you can be the host, all right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so we'll, we'll see. Oh, he's drinking the coffee too now. It's like, this is about to get serious. So around 20000 a month? No. Up? You can say- oh, yeah. You, it's more than that. You, you could say it's a decent number, guys. Okay. Let's yeah. just say it's a good number. Let's it's just, a decent that's what I'm number. Talking about. All right. Trust that's me. What we I'm talking it's about. in the six figures. We 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 were, we were in in Vegas. Not monthly. We had not monthly. No, 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 no. Not monthly. <laughs> yeah. I will get there one day, though. Yeah. Yeah. That oh no, awesome. it's 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 possible, man. There's levels to this game. You know, at the end of the day, uh, what was it last Tuesday? I had mentioned to the audience, we had like over 250 people, you know, majority because of the raffle. That's just the way it goes. People, like <laughs> But um, I, was, I met a 19-year-old kid who was making half a million dollars uh, off of his business ventures. And that's just the way the world is going now, guys. If you guys haven't already utilized the computer you're watching this at right now, your phone, which is a computer, right? I just bought my mom a brand new iPad, first brand new iPad she's ever had in her life. And she, she's stuck on that like glue, doesn't go to sleep now. But with that, it's educate yourself. Education is the most important thing, especially if you come from, let's say, not a well off family, um, you don't have the right cards in life. At the end of the day, the way I see life, guys, is it's not that you're dealt with the best cards. Life is not a matter of holding good cards, okay? But playing poor cards well, that's the way I see life, is whatever you have. I mean, back when I used to be in law enforcement, we didn't have the best and greatest equipment. We didn't have the latest and greatest True. you know, gear to, to have, but we made it work. What you have is what you have, you know, give me a shoestring. Okay. I'll make you <laughs> some MacGyver stuff. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, I, I you know, you do what you got to do. So that's what I always tell everybody. But with that yeah. great presentation, guys, I mean, Mike, like always, man, like always. Thanks, dude. Paul. Appreciate Matt, it. Matt, mad respect. And, you know, I think that's why you, you have your, your own cult uh and 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 uh and following online man people love you dude especially when they end up working with you you know thank you and, and I, it's you know it's about your network guys at the end of the day your network is your net worth and that's how i started in the atm business i'm gonna get into it in just a bit guys but i met an entrepreneur he had like a thousand plus atms just like you know like lee um based out of socal this dude he got into the dispensaries when they first launched back in like 2000, I'm going to say 15 to 2017 range and monster, monster, right? Incredible. Would fly into town, set up the ATMs and then find bolters. So at the end of the day, he was, he knew what he was doing and he showed me the game. So it was pretty cool, but anything else guys, before I get into it. No, that's great. That's been wonderful. Uh, I don't, I don't think people, uh, I don't think they want to see my math anymore. They're like, hey, those numbers. What, what? <laughs> I'm not even going to try to correct your math either. Nope. <laughs> but it is true, guys. Just to touch on that. If you are be, you are who you surround yourself with, the five people you surround yourself with. If any of those are, are sour apples, get them out, replace them with people that can get you knowledge. That's how I got there. I Some of them even that I thought were my really good friends, I had to get rid of them, man. It was just toxic. It wasn't teaching me how to get to the next level so I can get on another level and keep advancing because those people know people on other levels. So you are who you surround yourself with. That's all I got to say. That's And that's definitely one of the hardest things to do in entrepreneurship, guys, is actually separating yourself away from any negativity or anyone who is comfortable who is keeping you down. At the end of the day, you have to level up and life is short. Life is completely short, you know. Um, now that I have a little bit more life experience at the age of 34, oh man, life just goes like this, guys. And if, if, if for everyone who has kids, I know life is going like this. You're seeing your kid oh, yeah. from one to probably 10, and you're like, whoa, what happened? Right? One of my best friends came uh, for 4th of July and uh, he was like, dude, I have a 17 year old son. And I was just like, dude, that's crazy. <laughs> I remember when we were 17. You know, exactly. So, 
that's I got your- a 17 year old and two other kids and I'm going to be 40. And I'm like, where I was out riding bikes with them the other day. I'm like, man, I'm 39 years old. I, I'm still keeping up with them though. But dang that, where did the time go? Mm-hmm. If you don't move now and, and take care of your future now, I mean, time's just going to slip. Next thing you know, you're five years older, 10 years older, and then yeah. be regretting it. Yeah. Next five years. I mean, you got to plan them. You got to plan the next year. You know, uh, we're, we're four months away from 2023 20, guys. Yeah. And I feel like 2022 just started, but anyways, <laughs> we do get them. Awesome. Can you activate the share screen, brother. For sure. Let's make this happen for you. All right, guys. I know you are going to cover something phenomenal. Everyone's been waiting for you. All right, guys. So if you guys have been listening to Mike, if you guys have been listening to get them through this whole presentation, very knowledgeable guys, they come from different aspects of life. And that's why I like the ATM business. The ATM business, as far as what I know of it, for the past six years, okay, it's when I started. I started this while I was in law enforcement, guys. And if you don't know my background, my name is Paul Alex. I'm founder of ATMtogether.com and ATM Business for Beginners on Facebook. I'm going to go a little bit into my background, and then I'm actually going to show you the safest way that you can take the safest route that you can take to actually start your ATM business in 2022 and going into 2023. So let me go ahead and do a share screen with my computer. Okay, so if I did everything right, you guys should see a PowerPoint presentation that says, who am I? All right, guys, so once again, 